This video was brought to you by Nebula. A few days ago, the Labour Party launched a website on the domain thegpcfiles.com. It had a cryptic countdown and, for all intents and purposes, looked pretty creepy. Despite the dramatics, journalists were pretty quick to decipher what this was all about, as they quickly realised that the GPC part probably referred to something called government procurement cards. These journalists were vindicated on Monday, when the countdown hit zero and a 36-page document explaining the GPC scandal became accessible on the site. So, despite the hype that the opposition were trying to build, is there actually something in this scandal? What actually are GPC cards, and what is Labour claiming about them? Let's have a look. To get to the bottom of this, we're going to break down what GPCs are and where they've come from, how they've been used over the past few years, and finally, how people have reacted to this new report. So, starting with the history. Government procurement cards were introduced in 1997 in an attempt to increase efficiency of government departments. If government ministers were away from the office and made small purchases, they would be able to use these newly introduced cards to do so, without any of the previous bureaucracy. Well, that was the theory anyway. By 2011, it was realised that the cards were being misused, and the Cabinet Office began to implement new rules that would hopefully restrict misuse. Two of the most notable changes were requiring all departments to publish all transactions with a value of over £500, and the creation of an official investigation into the use of GPCs across government. These reports were quite damning, and found that basically there were no central rules on how they should be used. As a result, it was found that alcohol, expensive travel, five-star hotel rooms, and expensive meals at restaurants were all being purchased. The PAC report suggested that from then on, alcohol shouldn't be purchased, except in a limited number of exceptions, and that second-class travel and less than five-star hotels should be good enough. Additionally, the PAC proposed that all transactions should be published, not just those over £500. They also recommended that, while certain departments should still be able to set their own rules about the use of GPCs, there should be Whitehall set minimum standards on use in order to try and reduce inappropriate usage. Over the next few years, a number of the recommendations were implemented. However, many weren't, and this is something that Labour criticises in their report. Irrespective, by 2020, things had to change again in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The restrictions were loosened in order to allow government departments to quickly and easily procure needed items. For example, more people were given the cards. In fact, the civil service encouraged them to be used more. Labour have noted, though, that these changes were brought in in exceptional emergency circumstances, and have not yet been actually changed back. Anyway, that's what GPCs are and how the rules have changed. So let's move on to the second part of this video and have a look at spending on them in the last few years. One of the biggest findings is that GPC cards have been used a lot more in recent years. In the 2021 calendar year, the 14 main Whitehall departments, excluding the Ministry of Defence, whose data isn't included, spent £145.5 million using GPCs. Comparable departments to those around in 2010 and 2011 spent £84.9 million, an increase of £60.6 .6 million, or 71.4%, in only 10 years. If we break down the spending by department in 2021, we can see that the Ministry of Justice accounted for a huge amount of the spending. Now, this was also true in 2010 and 2011, but their spending has more than doubled from £36.9 million to a huge £84.9 million. Interestingly, the report actually breaks down spending at household name companies. The most spent at one of those companies was Enterprise Rent-A-Car, who received £414,785. IKEA was second with £237,683, and Apple was fifth with £101,467. None of this is all that enlightening though, as it could just be that justifiable spending has gone up. 
Labour digs a bit deeper here though. They found that government departments tend to spend more at the end of the year, with Fiona McTaggart, a Labour MP, saying that this is a quick way of gobbling through the end of your budget. It's not a necessary set of transactions. Labour also found that despite guidance suggesting that alcohol should not be purchased, the FCDO has spent more than £20,000 at Ridgeview Estate Winery. The FCDO put this down in the MISC Industrial Commercial Supplies category. The FCDO also spent £1,282 on Bluebell Vineyard Estate, putting this down as computer software stores. Now, in their defence, the FCDO may argue that their spending on alcohol and at restaurants and bars relates to diplomacy. Anyway, moving on slightly to luxury purchases, and we see that there's even further controversy here. For example, the government has purchased a number of VIP flights from Heathrow. Part of this is individuals being able to bypass normal check-in and security. Labour criticises the government for spending too much money in this way. They also criticise the government for purchasing luxury items. Labour present this as unnecessary spending, but the government would argue that they were for diplomatic purposes. A good example of this is the British Embassy purchasing a performance by a troupe in Stockholm to entertain guests. This cost just under £7,000. Anyway, this is roughly how Labour criticised the government. So let's move on to the last section of this video, the interpretations of the report. Now, given the build-up to it, it's fair to assume that Labour were hoping it would have a significant impact. And, well, it sort of hasn't. It hasn't featured on any major newspaper websites that much, and it doesn't really seem like there's been that much of a reception of it on Twitter. Tim Durant, who works for the Institute for Government, points out that GPCs account for only 0.014% of government spending. So if Labour were to attack the government on wasteful spending, there are probably other areas they could and probably should criticise. A point made by Durant and others is that if Labour are attacking the Tories on this, then they're giving them ammunition to use the same arguments about them if and when they get back into government. And considering that Labour are currently focused on rebuilding trust in politics, this whole thing could backfire quite badly. In fact, we've already seen this to some extent, with some papers already criticising Angela Rayner's expenses. All in all though, it's probably too early to tell whether Labour have landed a damaging blow on the Tories, or whether they've simply opened Pandora's box. This is far from the only mysterious and unusual thing going on though. And our friend Neo has a whole series, Under Exposure, which tackles topics from what really happened at the Bin Laden raid, the truth behind the MH17 investigation, or how the Twin Towers were built. That's a series exclusive to Nebula, the streaming service we're building with a whole bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to already know and love. If you sign up to Nebula, you'll find all of our videos ad-free, and occasionally released before YouTube. On top of that, you'll also find a whole bunch of TLDR explainers exclusively available on Nebula, plus an extended version of our show, The Daily Briefing, every single weekday. There's way more than just TLDR though. There's other original series we know you'll love, like Real Life Law's Incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes from all over the world. Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. And of course, Neo's Underexposure. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefing and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content, which will never make it to YouTube. If you want to sign up, then use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up, and we'll see you on Nebula.